So hello and welcome back to another edition of the homeschool educational supplement that we know as interesting stuff. And today we will be diving into the world of brilliant bugs or incredible insects, perhaps. And so let's do it. Now, whether you think about it or not, we are surrounded by little creatures. Perhaps you've noticed the little flies impaled on the windscreen of your car. Or maybe you saw a spider in the path recently. Either way, you can't ignore the fact that we are surrounded by life. In fact, living in the north of Scotland, you could be forgiven at times for getting a little bit annoyed by the um, midges that uh, populate the countryside. Especially if you're out there camping and you're trying to get away from things and have a good time and these little beasties are trying to feed on you. And you might be forgiven for wondering why at all we need these little creatures. Well, we'll get into that in a little bit. Now, did you know that scientists have identified over a million insect species? And they think that out there somewhere, there might be millions more. Now, these tiny animals are vital for supporting life on Earth, but their numbers are often in decline, so it's really important that we learn about their habitats and their habits, and that we try to protect them where possible. So these insects may be small, but there's a lot of them, and they live almost everywhere. You'll find them in parks and gardens, forests, deserts, under the ground, and even sharing your own home. And it's true, some people are a little bit scared of insects or don't like them. And there might be good reasons for that. In fact, I was out for a walk the other day and this wasp flew in between my glasses and my eye. It just popped in there and my God, you've never seen somebody panic so much in your life. I mean, I didn't get harmed, I didn't get stung or anything like that and I imagine the wasp was just as shocked as I was. But, uh, you know, encounters with insects can be a little bit freaky. But despite the fact that they can bite or sting, insects are really amazing. In fact, beautiful and interesting, but also weird and wonderful. So insects belong to the invertebrates, a group of animals that don't have any vertebrae or backbone. In fact, they don't have bones at all. They have a tough outer skin or shell instead, called an exoskeleton. Besides insects, invertebrates also include spiders, centipedes, worms, slugs, and snails. Now, another fascinating fact is that there are over a million different species of insects worldwide. You want examples? Well, here are some of the main groups. There are beetles with hard wing covers. There are stick insects that look like twigs or leaves. There are crane flies with their long legs. There are dragonflies and damselflies with the long wings and tails. There are bees, wasps, ants, termites. There's grasshoppers with their strong back legs. There's mantids. And there are butterflies and moths with large colorful patterned wings. Now, many insects, of course, spend a lot of time up in the air, simply because they have wings and they can fly, like bees, wasps, moths, locusts, ladybirds, and, of course, flies. Insect wings are usually very thin and light, but they have a network of veins that give them strength. The buzzing sound that some insects makes comes from their wings beating fast. Other insects, like bees and butterflies, have two pairs of wings. Butterflies and moths have tiny scales on the wings, which give them their colors and their patterns. In fact, I was out for a walk the other day, and the most beautiful butterfly you could ever imagine landed right in front of me on the path. So I made a little video of it and put it on my Instagram account. You can find it there, if you're interested. Anyway, there are those insects with two pairs of wings and insects also with only one pair of wings, like the crane fly. Now, bugs, like all living things, have a life cycle. Insects have their babies, but baby insects can look very unlike their parents. 
In fact, many types of insects go through a metamorphosis or a change of shape as part of their life cycle as they grow. If we take the example of the ladybird, the adult ladybird will produce eggs. The eggs will grow into larvae, which really isn't that much smaller than the adult ladybird, but it looks really different. The larvae will then, after feeding, grow into a pupa, which is hard, and inside of it, the adult will begin to develop. Now, these metamorphoses happen quite slowly, so you won't be able to observe them really. But you will be able to find loads of bugs wherever you are. In fact, if you go outside, if you find a tree or a bush, um, if you take a piece of white paper with you and say, put it on the ground under a bush and then you shake the bush, you will probably find that something will fall out and land on the paper. And it might even be an interesting little experiment to see what exists around about you. Of course, once you've examined the little creatures, don't forget to put them back. Also, many insects live under the bark of trees, so um, you could uh, try examining there as well and see what you can find. Wherever it is you look, you're sure to find something. There's even tiny bugs that exist in carpets and maybe even in beds as well. How crazy is that? So we know that the insects are all around us, but why do we need them? Well, insects are a vital part of nature and do many important tasks in their locality. At one level, they are food. The billions of insects that exist all over the planet are an important source of food for other animals, such as spiders, birds, bats, lizards, fish, and even bears, which all depend on insect prey to catch and eat. Also, all living things are part of some kind of food chain, especially in the animal environment. And it's the food chain that provides quite a lot of the energy necessary for life. Because obviously all living things need energy to survive. Now, food chains show the flow of energy from one living thing to another. Plants make their food using energy from the sun, animals eat the plants, and other animals eat the animals. So insects play a very vital role in the food chain. Without them, many bigger animals would starve. Some insects also pollinate plants. For example, honeybees fly from one flower to another, feeding on nectar. They spread the pollen between the flowers too. The flowering plants need to share pollen to help them make seeds. In fact, many other insects do this too, including some types of flies, butterflies, moths, and beetles. Quite a few insects are also recyclers as well. Many insects are decomposers, which means they feed on dead plants and animals, or on animal poo, and it ends up as insect poo, which becomes part of the soil, making it healthy and fertile so that new plants can grow. So I think you can begin to see how the role of insects is vital within life on our planet. But sadly, insects are in trouble. The number of insects in general is falling, and some species are even dying out. Bees, butterflies, and moths are especially at risk at the moment. One of the reasons is that turning wild areas into cities and farmland removes insect habitats, so they have nowhere to live. Also using pesticides, which are bug-killing chemicals, which a lot of farmers have to use to grow their crops, has a negative effect on quite a lot of the insects within the environment. But there are things that we can all do. For example, if you have a garden, you can let part of it grow wild and give insects a little place to live. And you can also, when you choose your food, choose an organic variety, which is grown without the use of uh, pesticides or chemicals. Now, there are many insects that are interesting and that we could focus on. But for an example today, let's take a look at ants. And they are a massive group of insect species that are related to wasps and bees. There are up to 22,000 different species of ants that live all over the planet, except for Antarctica and a few isolated islands. 
Now, although each individual ant is small, often just a few millimeters in length, their families can be supersized. Ants live in groups called colonies, which can range from 40 to 50 individuals, right up to many millions living together. These colonies are known as superorganisms because they work together almost like a single creature for the good of the whole environment. In fact, it's crazy that some ant colonies can be mind-bogglingly big. The largest found so far was an amazing 3,700 miles wide. And it was a connected super colony in southern Europe made up of millions of nests and billions of ants and species called Argentine ants. Other species of ants live in sophisticated farming colonies. These ants collect leaves and feed them to specialized fungi that they carefully cultivate in underground chambers. Ants started farming around 60 million years ago, which was way before humans even thought of the idea. Within colonies themselves, several different types of ants live. The biggest group are workers, which are usually females that can't breed and spend their lives finding and fetching food for the colony. Fertile male ants are called drones, and there are usually one or more fertile queen ants who mainly eat food and lay eggs. The ants themselves can be described as armor-plated, because like all insects, ants have skeletons on the outside of their bodies, not on the inside. These tough outer layers are called exoskeletons, and they support and protect their internal organs. And if you've ever wondered why an ant's eye looks so weird, if you've ever seen a picture of it, that's because it's made up of lots of tiny little lenses joined together. These are called compound eyes, and they're good for spotting movement, but not so good for studying things in fine detail. In addition, ants have two long feelers, or antennae, which sense for chemicals in the air and feel air currents and vibrations. They also use their feelers to talk to each other, passing on messages by touching the feelers together. Now, despite their tiny size, ants can be ferocious creatures. Many species have super powerful bites and toxic stings, which they use for killing prey and for defense. One example is the bull ant of Central and South America, which is thought to have the most painful sting of any insect in the world. Another example is the Dracula ant, which can snap its jaws together at a speed of 324 kilometers an hour, which is a pretty fast bite. So ants themselves are one of the most common varieties of insects. But there are, however, many other weird and wonderful varieties. In fact, sometimes nature is stranger than fiction. And here's a few examples. There is the golden tortoise beetle, which actually looks like a tiny golden tortoise. There's the saddleback caterpillar, which bizarrely enough looks like a strange little horse with a saddle on its back. There are the thorn bugs, which actually look like tiny little branches of a tree. Or how about the giraffe-necked weevils, which are Madagascan insects that use their long necks for fighting. There's a plant hopper nymph, which actually has a bottom that explodes. <laughs> no, seriously, it does, really. Apparently scientists aren't sure quite why this happens, but um, I guess it could be some form of defense mechanism. Then there's the atlas moth, which actually has wingtips that look like cobra snakes. There's the devil's flower mantis, which looks like an orchid in order to try to lure its prey. Then there are creatures like glowworms. I think we have them in Scotland somewhere, although I haven't seen any for a long time. And they're actually the larvae of a species of beetles that glow at night because of bioluminescent enzymes produced in their bodies. And finally, just for total weirdness, there's the pus mouth caterpillar, which has a face straight out of a horror movie, or at least part of its body, which looks like a face, but actually the real head is hidden inside of a mouth. 
And if that's not scary enough, it also sprays acid from its rear end. So perhaps it's good that these creatures are quite small. Because if they were large, I'm pretty sure we'd all be having a few more nightmares. But luckily, the giant insects usually only exist in bad Hollywood movies. So next time you're outside, around some element of nature, take a look. See what you can find there. See what you can recognize. Maybe there'll be something new. Maybe there'll be something unusual. And hopefully there'll be nothing too scary. Anyway, let's end on a lighter note. What's that? How about a few jokes? About insects? No, really, seriously. They exist. (laughs) You want an example? Here we go. What's an insect's favorite sport? Cricket. (laughs) Do you like that? Uh, How about this one? What do you call the end of a bee? A behind. Uh How about this? What do you get if you eat caterpillars? which actually you shouldn't really eat, to be honest. You get butterflies in the stomach. And what's an insect's favorite school subject? Mathematics. Dun, dun, dun. Did I make you laugh? Probably not. Anyway, never mind. You can share those with your friends and have a good groan. Well, that's it today on the subject of insects. If you'd like a different topic, or if you'd like me to cover something specific, then drop me a line and let me know. This has been Interesting Stuff, the odd and occasional homeschool educational supplement. And wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I wish you a fantastic day. Take care, and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye for now.